Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Celtic. As we know, Celtic have proceeded into the next round of the Europa League tournament. Uh, they're continuing European competition after Christmas. Fantastic stuff for Celtic this year. We've done it in questionable fashion, I suppose. Our Champions League group stage campaign this year wasn't memorable. But at the end of the day, at the start of the group stage, I said I would be very happy if we managed to finish third in this group. It was never going to be easy. Bayern Munich and PSG were handed to us two of the best Five teams in the world, you could say. And under like the Belgian champions, another strong team, arguably stronger than Celtic. It was always going to be a difficult challenge. It was never going to be an easy group for us. And we really had to put in a hard bit of work to get to this stage that we are now at. And that's exactly what we've done. We may have been questionable the other night against Anderlecht. At the end of the day, we are in the Europa League last 32, and that's exactly where I wanted to be. So I'm not going to complain too much to an extent. I'm very happy and I'm very proud of the team for getting to the last 32. So today, we're going to kind of talk about the best and worst case scenarios and how I think Celtic will handle and handle those scenarios and cope in those scenarios in the last 32 of the Europa League. Now due to seedings etc and finishing in the Champions League and not starting the Europa League stuff like that, there's only a certain amount of teams we can get. We can't get every single team that is available in the last 32 of the Europa League. There only has a certain few and I will read out those teams in a minute. There's some that I fancy there, majority of them though, let's be honest, we are going to struggle against. It's not going to be easy, not one game in fact is going to be easy. Of course there's going to be easier opposition but that's not going to be one easy game for Celtic out of anyone left in the tournament. After all, they worked hard, uh, just as hard as Celtic to get to this position. So it's never going to be easy for Celtic. Very difficult ties that we can be handed. And I'm going to talk about the three best scenarios and three worst scenarios. Just kind of how I talked about the best and worst case scenarios for Celtic in the Champions League group stage. What groups we could have got. I'm going to kind of do something similar. Remember, we're on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Hopefully get that for the end of the year. So make sure to like, share the video and such on Twitter, etc. For all Twitter at Ryan Stephen F. We're trying to grow, lads. I uh, appreciate all the support. So, anyway, without any further uh, delay, we're going to head right on this. I'm going to start by reading the teams that Celtic can be handed. I will put a graphic on the screen for this, uh, just so you can follow along. Um, but Celtic could be facing a number of teams, a number of top teams in the last fight of the Europa League. Those teams will include CSKA Moscow, Atletico Madrid, Sporting Lisbon, Red Bull Leipzig, Villarreal, Dynamo Kiev, Braga, AC Milan, Atalanta, Lokomotiv Moscow, Victoria Pletsen, Arsenal, Red Bull Salzburg, Athletic Bilbao, Lazio and Zenit St. Petersburg. Some some big names in there. Let's be honest, a lot of teams that Celtic would probably struggle against. I'm going to start with the three I think that would be the absolute worst scenario for Celtic. And by going back... You know, if we go by our last couple of draws in the Champions League group stage the past couple of years, we're probably going to get handed one of these because um, last year we handed Barcelona, Man City uh, and Monsieur Gladbach. This year, PSG, Bayern Munich and they're like two very difficult draws. Um, and if I continue with that trend under Brendan Rodgers, I imagine we might be handed one of the worst here. Do I jinx it? But I'm just going by prior experience. Uh, so we'll see. But in my opinion, these are the three worst scenarios for Celtic. Number one then, Atletico Madrid. Diego Simeone's side, can't speak. Diego Simeone's side have been very impressive in Europe the past few years, especially under Diego Simeone. They have got far in many tournaments, and, and including two finals. You know, they got to the final in 2014 and 16, I believe, where they were beaten twice off of rivals Real Madrid. This year, the group stage didn't go as planned for them, and they finished third in their group. It included, what was it, Chelsea and Roma uh, and Carabag, I believe that was the group. Um, they didn't do too well and they will be disappointed to say that they are slipping into the Europa League and now they will have the intent, I believe, along with many other teams who will be in that uh, bracket of the tournament, falling out the Champions League, the likes of Dortmund, the likes of Atletico Madrid. These teams will be dying to go and win this. And let's be honest, Atletico Madrid would probably a little up, have a shagged. Um, they are a big, you know, a big team. Very dangerous. You know, they're not you know, they're not too from from past experience of watching them, they're not known really for their attacking football. They're known for how dangerous they are on account of attacking. And Athletic Madrid just have a lot of dangerous players. They're not like all out attack like you know, the likes of Man City, Real Madrid. They don't go and, you know, bombard you with attacks. Probably against Celtic they would, but they're you know a very counter attacking style of football. Four four two. Simeone has kind of drilled that into Atletico Madrid. But the likes of Griezmann, Gamiro, Diego Costa who's coming in, Koke, um uh, Saul, all these players would have Celtic for breakfast. Uh, and it's a it's a real scary thought thinking about the fact that we could play that Atletico Madrid side who have been a force in Europe in the past few seasons and they will be a force 
Brentford this year in the Europa League can only imagine they will be going to win the whole thing. A team which I would love to avoid at all costs, probably the team I want to avoid the most, hence the reason I put them first. Sitting third in uh, the Liga BBVA, or the La Liga as it's now called, I think. It's always been called La Liga, I think just BBVA was a sponsor for a while. But anyway, they're sitting third in La Liga, not too far off the top, having an impressive domestic season and the disappointment of the Champions League, I'm sure, would be seen against Celtic as they'd probably put about six bias in both games. So, uh, I don't want to be pessimistic, but at the end of the day, they're a very good team with very good players, and it's just reality that they would probably have a shag. So, Atletico Madrid in at the worst-case scenario for number one. Who else would I reckon is another worst-case scenario team? Well, let's uh, let's have a look. With this one, I'm going to go with one I've not actually seen mentioned a lot on Twitter, etc. It's one that, personally, I would just like to avoid, because, once again, it's a team that are very good at hitting teams on a counter-attack, and very quick, very dangerous players, and it's actually Red Bull Leipzig, a team who I would like to avoid, maybe I'd like to get for the fact, I want to go to the last 32 match maybe, so maybe if I'm going to Germany, it would, it would be lovely, uh, but the, the thought of playing them on the park, not so lovely, of course last season had a fantastic year in the Bundesliga, this year in the Champions League, they weren't too impressive, at the end of the day they finished third, I think they picked up 7 points though, which obviously, still a lot better than what Celtic done, and they have very very dangerous players, very very dangerous team, uh, and I imagine they would want to go far, it's the first time you know they've had a really big European season, it's the first European season on the year, first time in the Champions League, first time in the Europa League, and I imagine they'd like to make a wee bit of a name for themselves, going far in the tournament, and they have players to do a lot of damage to Celtic, Timo Werner, uh, Kevin Campo, Emil Forsberg, uh, Bruma, fantastic side Leipzig have, and they're doing fantastic still in the Bundesliga. Not as, not as good as what they were last season. This time last year, you know, they were top of the Bundesliga. They were flying a little bit uh, and taking Bayern to their limits. This year kind of tailed off a little, but a team that still offer many dangerous attacking attributes uh, and could do a lot of damage to Celtic. I feel like we just struggle to keep up with the pace of a team that has players such as Timo Werner. So it's a team I would like to avoid because... Let's be honest, at the end of the day, probably would have us knocked out. I just feel like they'd be a wee bit ruthless with us, toy about with us a wee bit, and I don't like the thought of that. I don't like the thought of many goals being put by us. Probably other teams you could put above them, such as AC Milan. You might want to see AC Milan, uh, Red Bull Leipzig over AC Milan, but for me personally, I just would like to avoid Leipzig. I feel like they will cause um, massive problems, maybe more than such the likes of AC Milan. Final team I would like to avoid, pretty much the obvious one, Arsenal. Not yet in a tournament. To be honest, I'd love to take on Arsenal for the fact, nice wee trip down to London, sleeper train, pished. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, I would like to take on Arsenal eventually because I would love to put us up against, once again, an English team. Last year against Manchester City, we took them to the limits twice at the Etihad and at Celtic Park. They couldn't beat us. And it's one of those, you know, you love rubbing it in the face of those who want to mock you. As I say in every fucking video, I love to rub it in the face. And I'd love to do it again with Arsenal. Arsenal, though, the early favourites to win this competition. Pretty much straight away when they when they finished fifth in the league, people were saying, right, Arsenal should be going and winning the Europa League next season after what Man United done. Arsenal pretty much out to do the same. I don't want to play them in the last 32. Eventually, I would like to play them for that reason. If we beat them, the bragging rights, oh, love it. But um, no, in the last 32, I feel like they would just have us knocked out. Uh, I'm not going to molly code my way around that. They're a better team than this. You might think Arsenal are shit. Uh, and they're not exactly shit. Obviously, they've been questionable the past few, few years. A lot of people frustrated Arsene Wenger. They've not been title challengers. Let's be reality check a minute. Let's just reality check. Let's be honest. They would still have Celtic um, out, of a, out of a tournament in knockout stages. Granted, if it was a group stage of the Champions League, we held off Man City. I don't see why we couldn't hold off Arsenal, but you've just got to be realistic and, and saying they have the players in Mesut Ozil, Alexis Sanchez, etc. to put us out of the tournament. I still believe they're a very impressive team with a very impressive manager who has a lot of accolades to his name, and I feel like he would be able to, you know, get us out of the tournament. He's there to win it. Arsenal want to win that tournament, uh, just like Man United done last year, so it would not be an easy feat to play them. Uh, let's avoid them in the last 32, though. This video really dragging on a lot longer than it was uh, originally intended to. Um, but best case scenarios, well, we're going to run through these quickly, because let's be honest, the best case scenarios... Other teams you barely hear of compared to the likes of Athletic Madrid, Arsenal, and Red Bull, Leipzig. So I don't know much about them. There's not much for me to shout on about and say, oh, they're weak here. 
We can do this to them. We can exploit this part of them. There's not much I can say. At the end of the day, um, these are teams who I do not watch, do not care about, and I want us to play them because I feel like we've got the best chance of knocking them out. Let me make it perfectly clear. By no means will it be easy putting these teams out of the Europa League. By saying best scenario doesn't mean that I feel like we're guaranteed a fucking win. I just mean it's easier than Athletic Madrid, Arsenal, etc. I still feel like the chances of us heading through the last 16 concerning, uh, taking into concern, sorry, the, the performances in the, the group stage, especially against Anderlecht, are very slim of us heading through, but these are the teams that give us the best chance of doing so. Number one best case scenario for me is probably Braga. Once again, do not know an awful lot about them. Just know they're easier than Atletico Madrid. They're sitting fourth in the Portuguese table right now. Not having a bad season whatsoever. They're not far off of top spot as I currently look at it. Um, so they're going to be a dangerous team because the Portuguese league, once again... Up here, whereas the league is, uh, is a lot further down, a lot more competition, a lot more difficult in that league, of course. So Braga to be sitting fourth really does show you a lot about them. They proceeded from their group in the Europa League, once again shows you a lot about them. Uh, they have a wee bit of a presence. Obviously, I know who Braga is, I'm not saying it as if, like, I, when I say I know nothing about them, it doesn't mean like I don't know who Braga are. They're a big, they're a big side, big Portuguese side. Well, lovely wee trip, nice wee stadium on that, rocks and the mountains, shit like that. <laughs> um, Honestly, honestly, I feel like it's a game we could maybe take them somewhere at Celtic Park and away from home. It's just going to be incredibly nervy. We need to defend at our best. Bring in defenders to handle teams like this. Bragaro, number one for the best case scenario. When I say number one, I mean the first one. I, I, I feel like the, the best case scenario is going to be the team I talk about last. Like the absolute best case. At number two, you know, there's a, it's a, such a wide variety, but I'm going to go with Lokomotiv Moscow. Um, the other team from Moscow that's still left in this tournament. It's ESK Moscow, very impressive performances uh, beating Manchester United of course taking them to the limits at Old Trafford in the Champions League group stage so I'm not going to go with CSK I'm going to go with Lokomotiv Moscow to me it's just a less known Moscow side and I mean obviously CSK the Russian champions so uh, exactly where I'm coming from is correct they are the lesser known and the lesser team from Moscow so the team I'd like to take on if drawn any of the Moscow teams Lokomotiv don't know much about them just know once again same sort of scenario take them to the limits at Celtic Park and defend for a life away from home try and get somewhere with them I feel like it'd be a match we could you know get something from and hopefully that could be a match we'd see us through the last 16 if not not going to be hungry but a team that I would, wouldn't mind drawing at all Lokomotiv Moscow Finally, I think the best case scenario is probably going to be uh, Victoria Pletson. Now, by no means am I saying they're a shit team or anything like that. To be honest, they might even end up beating us. There's a realistic chance of that. Um, but they're from, you know, the you know the lessest... The, the, the lessest? That's not a fucking word. The less, you know, the least, um, you know, prominent league in there. The Czech First Division. Um, who gives a shit about Czech football? I don't know. People in Czech will be saying, who gives a shit about Scottish football? Victoria Pletson are very impressive domestically. Also, it'll be a battle of the two teams who are unbeaten. Uh, as we currently speak of, so both Celtic, as we all know, and uh, Victoria Pletson are unbeaten in their domestic divisions. They are the Czech champions. The Czechian? Is that? I don't know. They're the champions of the Czech Republic anyway. Uh, and have been the dominant team there for a while. And probably would pose quite the threat to Celtic, but I just feel like... Out of every team there, and you scan through and you think, what one do you want? Victoria Pletson is the one that it, it jumps out. That one jumps out. Um, you'd rather have them over everyone for me personally. don't know about you. Let me know your opinions. But if I was to pick any, it would be Victoria Pletson. I'm not too sure how they performed in the Europa League. I'll have a quick check. Um, I'll try, I, I mean, I, I don't know if they finished top of their group or anything like that. It would be nice to know. Um, I'm looking at the results here. Uh, Hapwell, Bersheva, obviously we played them. They beat them. They beat uh, Steria Bucharest. They beat Lugano. They were not in the most difficult group in the world. Um, so do you know what? Maybe we can. Maybe. Uh, really, I feel like that would be the closest, you know, sort of comparison to Celtic there. I feel like it's a team we could we could potentially knock out, but I'm not going to be overly confident of that. Anyway, that does it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed. Let me know your opinions of the best and worst scenario that you would like to see or get or avoid, blah, 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 in the Europa League Class 32. If you have enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, remember to share. We'll get to 10k, hopefully. And uh, aye, until next time, I'll see you all later.